my channel I'm so glad you stopped by today because today we are gonna be making a gargoyle now I didn't want to just make any little gargoyle I wanted to try something a little bit different so today I'm gonna be making a copper patina gargoyle also if you guys really like the pattern I used to make this art doll I have it available on my Etsy shop also the pattern is more versatile so if you don't want to make an art doll and make all the clay pieces I've set it up to where you can also just make a plush anyways let's get started so for this piece, because I haven't made them in quite a while, I decided that I wanted to go with a more curved horn, kind of like a ram horn. So I'm going to start on that first, and then once we get the horns done, we can then work on the head and then the clay feet and hands. Now rounded horns tend to be quite heavy, so instead of just using a wire frame to add support to it, I'm also going to increase the thickness of my wire frame by adding some foil to it. So I've got that wrapped around, that way I don't have to use all this clay and make a really heavy head. Anyways, I'm going to get our wire frame completely covered in clay. I'm going to start with more of the inside portion of the curve of the horn, and I really don't want to add a ton of detail to this portion. I'm just going to cover it up and smooth it out. And then for the backing of the horn, that's where I'm going to add a bunch of different layers. So I broke up a bunch of different pieces of clay in different sizes as we go along the length of the horn. And I'm going to start at the tip and work my way layering these pieces of clay until we get to the base of the horn. Once I have all my layers in place, I can then take my tools and start refining the shape of our layers. I can clean up the edges, add more wrinkles, rough things up. Basically, whatever texture I want to add to the horn, I'm going to add. And then once I like the look of the horn, I'm going to put it in the oven for a bake. Now, we are going to be baking these again once they're attached to the head. So you only need to do probably a pre-bake. So roughly about 25 minutes at our normal 275 Fahrenheit temperature. And then once the horns are out of the oven and finished cooling down from their bake, we can then start working on the clay head. So I have a base laid out of tin foil. It's glued to a glass container so I have something to hold on to. And I'm just going to start covering this in clay like we did with the horns. For the shape of the head, I really don't want a very long snout or anything like that. I kind of want a short, more stocky head to go with our horns. I almost have envisioned more of a skeleton type face, so a very short nose, more flat, and different things like that. So once I have my base laid out, I've got a rough idea of what my head shape is going to be. I'm going to start adding details to the face. I'm going to start with the eyes, nostrils, pretty much all the features of the face that we want to throw in there. Now while messing around with this, I realized that I didn't like the very front of the nose. I wanted it to be a lot flatter, so I did remove a good chunk of clay and I'm really happy that I did that because it was starting to look more like a beak and I really wanted it to look like a skeleton type dragon head. Once I'm done adding a few details to the face, I have a rough idea of where I want my horns to be placed on the head. So I'm going to go ahead and take those and I'm going to push them into the side of the head where I want them to be, make sure they're nice and even. And then I'm just going to take a little bit of extra clay, cover up that seam, and blend everything together. Now for the hands and feet, I wanted something to be kind of more bulky. I wanted to not make them look too small in proportion to the head. So I added some really large claws to the wire frames that I'm going to work with. And then once those are pre-baked on, I started covering everything up in clay and just adding a little bit of detail here and there on the clay pieces. I didn't want to go too, too detailed to pull away from everything else because we're going to have a lot of things going on with this piece. 
Now, if you've watched any of my other videos, you know when I make my hands and feet, I like to do a lot of pre-bakes to save my work in progress. That way I don't have to worry about bumping anything and having to sculpt something over and over again because I just randomly stick my thumb in it or something. So that's what I did after I added the claws and a little bit of support to the wire frame. I then worked on the bottom of the hands and feet, just adding a little bit of wrinkles and bulk to the wire frame. Did another pre-bake and then worked on more of the actual detail which will be on the top of the hand or foot. Now when making feet, especially if you're going to have something standing on two legs, don't be afraid to add a decent amount of weight to these. It's going to help it kind of stand better if majority of the weight is lower on your art doll. So you'll notice that the back feet are quite bulky and it's going to help our gargoyle stand up correctly and not like fall on his face because his head's so heavy. This is just something important to think of when you're making the clay pieces for your art doll. That's where most of the weight is in your art doll and kind of figuring out where you need that weight most to kind of make everything stand up is pretty important. So it's not one of those things you think of right away, but I do recommend kind of considering it when you're working on the clay pieces. It'll help you in the long run when you put everything together. Anyways, let's get all of our clay pieces in the oven and baked, that way we can start painting them. So for a finished bake, I normally take about 45 minutes at 275 Fahrenheit. Now for painting our clay pieces, I will admit that this part was a little bit of an experiment on my part because I've never painted anything to look like patinaed copper, and it took me quite a bit of layering to get it to finally look like what I wanted it to look like. So you'll notice that it looks crazy at first. At first, I figured it would be best to work on the blues and greens of the patina so that I could cover everything up and not have it so bright. So at first, we're making it very neon blue and green, and then we're slowly adding more cream colors to it golds, coppers. Um, the golds and coppers are more of a metallic paint that I'm working with and they did take a few layers here and there. Also I'm using a lot of different shades of kind of gold and copper to get it to look right. I didn't just use one color. I found that it kind of needed multiple versions to get it to finally look like copper. I even found using a white pearlescent really helped as well. I don't know really why other than it kind of more muted the colors that I was making too bright and too dark for the copper. So I did that and eventually it looked like how I wanted to. I did a few extra highlights of the blues and greens afterwards to kind of bring them out a little bit and to just make them the right tone. And also I'm making it very random. You're not seeing me cover things and make patterns or anything like that. I'm trying to have it splotchy like something had just aged so you really don't have much control of where the patina is going. So I tried my best to make it look very random. And then once I had all the painting dry, I took my resin, I actually switched over to a different brand called um, Total Boat, I believe. I'll have to double check this, but I ended up switching to this because I see a lot of other crafting type YouTubers use it. And I will highly recommend this type of resin when it was done curing. It's just, it feels a lot more sturdy. It feels thicker and stronger. Um, it also is just a lot clearer. So if you guys are interested in using resin, uh, Total Boat is definitely a good resin to use. Anyways, while everything is curing, let's get started on the sewing and getting everything ready to put our gargoyle together. Now I have the pattern for our gargoyle looking a little bit different than normal. Normally I have everything cut out, but right now I have it sketched out on a bunch of 8x10 pieces of paper, and that's because I took photos of it. That way I could turn it into a digital file so you guys can end up using it as well. So this is for sale on my Etsy shop, so if you guys want to have this gargoyle pattern, go ahead and check that out. I'll have links down below, but this is all the different pieces that we're going to have. Also I'm going to have pieces on that pattern so you can make an entire plush piece instead of one that needs clay pieces. 
And so if you're someone that doesn't want to make clay pieces, you just want to make a plush, the pattern will work for you as well. I just wanted to make sure that it was versatile in case someone didn't want to have to go through the process of making their clay pieces. Anyways, let's get started on all the sewing. So for my gargoyle, I decided that I wanted to break up the pattern into a bunch of different patterns. That way I could add markings to the sides of the body and the arms. So I'm going to be using a fur fabric and a kind of plush scaly fabric for this. And I'm just going to sew all of those different pieces together first. That way we can start using the basic shape of the patterns. So that's what's all broken up right now is just all the different markings that I wanted to throw onto the piece. So I'm going to start with the main body first. We're going to have a left and a right piece for this, a belly piece, and a piece that will go down the back. So we're going to take the belly piece and then the left and right pieces and we're going to sew those together first. We're going to have to wait on the back piece until we start putting everything together. So we're going to put that off to the side right now. And then for the arm pieces, we're going to have a front and a back, and then we also have a piece that I kind of added to make the arm a little bit bulkier, and I'm just going to call this the armpit. And we're just going to sew these three pieces together, just like we did with the body. And then for the back legs, they have an inside portion and an outside portion, and I'm just going to take these and sew these down the very front of them. And then for sewing the wings, we have three layers that we need. We're going to have the underside and the top side of the arm portion of the wing, and then we have the more lacy fabric that I want to use for the webbing of the wing. And I'm pretty much going to sandwich that lace type fabric between the two layers for the arm portion. And then the pattern for the wing I have sketched out on some stabilizing fabric, and I'm going to pin this to the very front of everything and follow the lines that I have sketched out to basically sew the wing together. That way I don't have to draw on the outside of the fabric and have markings and stuff that I have to worry about washing off. So I'm just going to sew everything together, and then the stabilizing fabric just rips away once you're done sewing. Okay, so we pretty much have everything ready and we're going to start putting together our gargoyle. So I pre-made a wire frame for this and the only thing that I really did extra with this was I reinforced the front arms and the neck. That way they were sturdy enough to hold up the head because it was a little bit heavier than I liked. First thing that I'm going to add to the wire frame is going to be the fabric for the body. So I ended up cutting some holes for the wires for the arms and legs and I'm just going to run this over our wire frame. And then I'm going to take our finished clay head and I'm going to glue it to the end of the wire for the neck. You'll want to let that dry a little bit and then we can take the fabric for the neck and start gluing it around the base of the head. At this point, we're going to need that piece of fabric that's for the back, and we're going to start sewing this together. The head was a little bit less wide than I thought it was, so I did have to alter this just a little bit. So we're going to start sewing our body closed, and we're just going to keep sewing until we get to the point where we're going to add the wings. So I'm going to sew the neck mainly, stuff that, and then we're going to add the wings to the wire frame. So I'm just going to take the fabric for the wings, we're going to slide it over the wires for the wings, kind of stuff the the base of them and then start sewing the body closed working around the wings and sewing those in place as well. Once we have the wings in place we can continue stuffing and closing up the body until we get to the very tip of the tail. And then once we have the body put together I'm going to take my hair trimmer and I'm going to start going over the fur portions of the body and I'm going to trim most of this all the way down. I'm going to leave a little bit of fur on the neck just because I kind of like how it looks but all of this is going to be cut down as short as I can get it. After that we can then start adding our arms and legs to the body. So I'm going to start with the arms, I'm going to take the fabric for those and I'm going to start sewing them onto the body going around the wire for the arms. Next, I'm going to adjust the length of the wire for the arms. I always leave these a little bit longer than I need them just to be safe. So I'm just going to adjust the length and then we're going to connect the clay hands to the ends of these using a thinner gauge wire. I usually like using a 20 gauge for this and a 16 or 14 gauge for the body itself. So I'm going to get those in place and then I'm going to take the fabric for the arms and glue them around the bases of the hands. I'm going to let those dry a little bit and then we can stuff and close up everything. 
and just like the body we're going to shave down the fur portion of these as well even the armpits even though I kind of like the idea of leaving them furry I decided to trim them all the way down too I then did the same thing for the back legs. I sewed the fabric in place on the body for them, attached the clay legs to the wire frame, glued everything around the clay foot, and then stuffed and closed everything up. Okay, so our body is finally put together and now it's time to finish up the details. If you noticed, our fabric really doesn't match our clay pieces, so we're going to be painting this to get as close to those colors as possible. So I'm going to start adding paint to the fabric and just adjusting the tint here and there. I made sure to leave off to the side the paints that I used on the clay head, that way I could have the same effect. So I'm just gonna keep adjusting the colors until I like how everything looks. And then I have a little bit of fake leather fabric that has a scale pattern. And I decided to cut a bunch of the scales out and glue them onto the body. So I'm gonna lay those out, let them dry. And then I'm also going to kind of go over everything with some fabric markers to just add a touch more detail around the scales. Okay guys, and here is our copper patinaed gargoyle. I had so much fun with this. It was definitely a challenge to get the copper coloring to work, but I think I nailed it. I mean, there's always room for improvement. Anyways, I'm gonna have him in my Etsy shop, so if anyone wants to give him a new home, check the links down below. Also, again, I have the sewing pattern available on my Etsy shop too, so if you guys want to follow along or if you wanna try and make your own gargoyle, like I did with the little plush pattern, so again, you don't have to make clay pieces if you don't want to with this pattern. I've made all the patterns to make a head and feet and all of that. Those are both on my Etsy shop, so check the links down below. I also have links down there of a bunch of different art supplies that I like to use to make my art dolls. So if you guys are really interested in trying a bunch of different things out, check those out. Now these are affiliated links, so if you guys buy anything through them, it does help support the channel. And thank you guys so much for watching. Make sure to like, subscribe, to all that fun stuff, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye!